Um, I'd, I'd like to make some comments while Horatio gets set up. Uh, we're, we're planning this year, on, after e the close of each quarter, to bring a report to the council and let you know uh, how we feel we're doing, uh, compare our, comparing our revenues to our expenses that we've put in our budget. The other thing you're going to see today is Horatio is going to show you the gap projected for next year. And one of the things we're going to be doing is keeping the council up to date, but we want to begin working on that gap now and try to get the revenue lines and the expense lines uh, on top of each other. So when we bring you the budget, we won't we won't be bringing it to you with that large gap if we can solve that problem. So we'll be doing this quarterly an update on uh, on where we are in our budget. So Horatio, yeah. Horatio, former mayor, members of city council, Morning. Horatio Porter, the budget officer. Uh, thanks for that introduction, Tom. This is the first of several quarterly reports that we'll begin we'll be doing this uh, fiscal year to highlight the results. <laughs> Uh, for the budget and also the results for the year. What we'll try to cover today real quickly is uh, the strategic approach we'll take to the reporting that we currently do, as well as we'll review the budget update for FY 2011, and then we'll give a preliminary view of the budget gap for FY 2012, and we'll spend just a few minutes talking about capital planning. As you know, uh, we like to take a different approach towards the budgeting process this year, and Tom alluded to this earlier. We spend an awful lot of time, uh, spend six to nine months every year discussing the real uh, tough decisions for the budget, the reductions that are necessary, the cuts that we have to make, um, and the layoffs that may be impending, and those are oftentimes very difficult decisions. What we want to try to do going forward is not spend so much time focusing on all the negative impact, but also give the council better information on what we are doing as a city. There's 6,000 employees that work here day in and day out providing services for the residents, and we think we owe it to the council and to the residents to do a better job of reporting what we are doing. Again, it's easy to focus on the 100 layoffs we had last year, the services that are getting eliminated or reduced. But we want to try to do a better job of providing this council and the residents more information uh, throughout the year. So what we want to do is provide a quarterly report. And every quarter, as Tom mentioned, we'll come to you and give you a financial update on where we stand. We'll also let the departments give you an operational update, some things that they're working on in their organizations that demonstrate their ability to deliver services throughout the city. And the other thing we want to try to do going forward is provide better information on capital programs. We haven't done a real good job of giving this council updates on the various bond programs or critical capital campaigns. We want to try to do a better job of that going forward. On the financial updates, we'll talk about, again, the FY 2011 update, and we'll also talk about the preview for the uh, 2012. And then operational, again, each department has various goals and objectives that they're working on, and again, we feel we owe it to the council to give you that information throughout the year. Oftentimes, we try to cram that information into a budget retreat, and we'll, we'll hold you up for two whole days, and departments parade before you and give you all this information. It's difficult for you to try to process all that information and understand what that impact, what that means for the budget. So we want to try to make sure we give you that information year-round. As we move into the FY 2011 budget gap, if we look at just the revenues, we look at the revenues we started out with uh, for FY 2011, here are some of the significant changes we've seen already in the revenues. One particular decline in revenues on the auto pound and towage and storage fees. As you know, we moved that location from the previous location to a new location, and we're just not able to process as many vehicles as we'd originally planned. So as a result of that, that revenue is down, uh, and it will be down, we we'll anticipate, for the rest of the, the fiscal year. We've also seen a reduction in traffic fines of about $370,000. In talking to courts, we're actually written fewer citations this year than we have last year. So that's actually a good thing that there are fewer citations, but the downside is we have fewer revenues than we had originally budgeted. In addition, there's some other uh, revenues that are down compared to the budget as well. There, will, there is one significant bright spot, and you see the sales tax improvement. In your packet today, there is an IR on sales tax collections. For the month of December, we collected the highest sales tax ever in the city of Fort Worth. <laughs> the highest sales tax ever in the city. No, thank you. <laughs> Again, the highest sales tax we collected, 1.3 million more than we collected last year. Through the first three months of this fiscal year, again, just the first three months of this year, we're already $2.3 million ahead of what we budgeted in sales tax. So if those trends continue, sales tax will really be a positive uh, impact for the city going forward. Uh, again, we're 9% higher than we were last year, 9% ahead of budget. So again, sales tax really are pretty strong. And it's in a lot of different categories, and we can provide more detail on those categories. But on the revenue side, again, there are some shortfalls in our revenue that we're anticipating, but again, there's a pretty significant increase in our sales tax. We're forecasting sales tax to be pretty flat going forward, but that's 
conservative. Uh, we do anticipate sales tax to be significantly higher as we move through the rest of the fiscal year. On the expenditure side, there are some expenditure changes that we've seen uh, since the adoption of the budget. During the budget process last year, we were actually in the process of negotiating our electricity contract. That contract was finalized a few months ago. That yields a savings of $1.2 million. Additionally, we have some per personnel related costs. There's some positions that hadn't been filled. So some savings that departments are actually capturing now in the budgets uh, that are, are positive. And there's some other savings that we're, we're seeing as well to the tune of $601,000. So all told, about $2.6 million worth of and fewer costs that we're anticipating this upcoming fiscal year as opposed to the original budget that was adopted again in September. This slide is intended to give you an overview of the entire general fund. And I'll start at the very top here, the adopted budget. And as you know, the adopted budget for revenues for the general fund is $522 million, and the expenditures were $531 million. There were some reductions that this council didn't want to uh, impose last year. We didn't want to close all the libraries. We didn't want to uh, deactivate fire companies. There were some other reductions that the council chose not to take. So to offset that, uh, we use excess fund balance. Uh, the decisions made last year to use excess fund balance to the tune of $9 million to fund those critical programs that this council felt were important. Since the adoption of the budget, there have been some supplemental appropriations that this council has approved, $2.6 million of additional revenue, and then there's also $17 million worth of additional expenditures that this council has approved in supplemental appropriations. And that uses additional $15 million of the excess fund balance. And we've just talked quickly about the changes in the revenues and also the changes in, in expenditures. All told for the fiscal year, based on the results through December, we have revenues at about $522 million. Expenditures about $546 million, which means we're going to use about $24 million of the excess fund balance. As of now, we have $35 million of excess fund balance available. So we have the funds to cover the supplemental appropriations that were approven and the funding of the critical expenditures that were identified in last year's budget. So again, we have $24 million of use of fund balance, and we have about $35 million of estimated excess fund balance to cover those costs. That leaves the remaining $11.2 million dollars of savings in our, in our fund balance, if you will, to cover future costs or future needs. This slide here shows the citywide view of selected funds. You see, again, the general fund. And I'll focus on just this column here, the source and use of fund balance. Again, we talked quickly about the general fund, $24.4 million, $24 million of fund balance that we'll use. But again, there's $35 million of excess fund balance that we have available. On the enterprise, enterprise funds, again, water, sewer, and those other funds, they're going to actually contribute to their fund balance to the tune of about $3.6 million, and their fund balance hadn't been calculated at this point. On the insurance funds, they're going to use about $1.8 million of fund balance, and this is in large part to workers' comp claims. They're significantly higher than we had anticipated. And although they're going to use one8 of their fund balance, they have seven point nine million available to use. Insurance funds, not a significant change. On the CCPD, or Crime Control Prevention District, they're anticipating using $1.7 million of their fund balance. As you know, much of that is to purchase the vehicles that were a part of their budget last year. And again, they still have an excess of six point one million to cover that. Now, Culture and Tourism, they're doing some renovations at the Will Rogers and some other facilities to make the, the facilities what they need to be. And they also have $12 million of excess. So all told, departments either within budget, the funds are within budget, or they have the available excess fund balance to cover um, the shortfall. This chart here, as we shift towards FY 2012, you would call this chart last year. At the start of the budget process last year, we were anticipating a $73 million gap. Expenditure line growing significantly and the revenue line not as significantly. So we were anticipating a $73 million gap in the first year and it rose to $100 million here and ultimately to $142 million in the out years. Based on the decisions that the council made last year and some of the changes in the assumptions, we were able to close the FY 20 budget gap in large part, there's still a use of fund balance here. We're able to close that budget gap significantly, bringing the old red line down to the new red line, and their green line of revenues up slightly. So the gap is now $31 million. So pretty dramatic reduction in the, in, in the gap, and it grows, stays pretty steady till FY 2015. What I'm going to do now is walk you through real quickly what gives rise to this $31 million gap so that we're all clear um, on the gap. Again, FY 2011, we adopted the budget, and we're assuming we're going to use $9 million of fund balance. Again, total revenue is 522, fund balance of $9 million, and we had 531 of expenditures. So that was a balanced budget with the use of fund balance. If we assume everything else stays the same, if we assume revenue stay the same, initially, if we assume the revenue stay the same and expenditures stay the same, then we're $9 million, there's a $9 million delta. 
we got to make up the $9 million delta going forward. So moving into the FY2012, we start for $9 million that we got to make up that's part of the expenditures. Here are some costs that we knew we were going to have last year, above and beyond the 2011 budget. The police and fire contract, we knew health insurance premium is going to go up about 12 percent, and the council also made a commitment to fund retiree health care over a 20-year horizon. That's that impact. Again, these are costs we knew above and beyond the budget. There are also some non-recurring costs that we won't see in FY2012, the Super Bowl. We won't have another Super Bowl expenditure next year. We also won't have an election next year. We won't have the state legislative session next year. So those costs in FY2011's budget, we won't see again next year. So the baseline, if you will, the starting point is $23 million budget gap for FY2012. In addition to that, there are some things that could happen or are likely to happen in FY2012 that add to the gap. We've talked a little bit about sales tax. We anticipate sales tax revenue to continue to be strong as we move through this fiscal year, but also through next year. There's also uh, some incremental property tax revenue that we're anticipating. So about $7 million more than we adopted this year in, in additional revenue that we'll have. There was a recommendation made last year by the mayor's task force to move one penny of the tax rate from general fund to debt service to increase our debt capacity to deal with transportation issues. If we do that, that costs the general fund about $4 million. This next item here, $4.8 million for pay increases. General employees didn't receive a pay increase in the current budget year. There was actually a 3% pay reduction last year, and it's the, the, the thought at this point that we need to begin to make some allowances, if you will, for pay increases for general employees. Police and fire both have their contracts, but there also should be some consideration, if you will, for raises for general employees. This next item is just a placeholder for things that we don't know about, whether it's a state legislator or just new costs that we may have, whether it's parkland maintenance, those kinds of things that we may incur in FY 2012. There was a decision made last year, a recommendation made last year to, to continue transferring costs from the CCPD fund to the general fund. That impacts about $1.2 million, almost $1.3, and then inflation and other costs. So the gap at this point is about $31 million. $31 million gap is what we're looking at, which is significantly better than a $100 million gap, which is what we were facing uh, before we made those changes. And a $31 million gap is clearly better than a $7 million gap that we saw last year. And this last item on here is a uh, police and fire training facility. I believe you've been briefed. Uh, on that, and the impact on that on that number, could, the impact on FY 2013 could be about 5.7 million dollars um, going forward. The challenge, and Tom mentioned this earlier, how do we begin to tackle this 31 million dollar problem? And in the past, we've waited till um, August and come back with recommendations that are oftentimes difficult and challenging, and, and oftentimes painful. And the goal this year is to begin dealing with that as we go throughout the fiscal year. We've already identified there's an estimate of about $11.2 million of excess fund balance that the council has that we could use to address FY 2011's, 2012's budget gap. Additionally, the aviation fund will be reimbursing the general fund for, um, for fire services that have been provided to the aviation facilities throughout the, oh, throughout the city. That amount is not determined at this point, but there could be a potential source of funds that come to the general fund from the aviation fund. The other critical point and what staff will spend some time on over the next few months is identifying savings in the FY 2011 year to build into this, to add to this $11 million. It'd be great if we can come back to this council. I don't think it'd be great. I think it's what we'll do. We'll come back to this council um, in August and say the budget has been closed, the gap has been closed, and here's what we've done to do so. So we'll create savings throughout the year, and we'll manage those critical cost drivers, whether it's vacant positions, whether it's contracts that hadn't been finalized or entered, in, 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 entered into yet, We'll do those kinds of things to make sure that we begin to build a savings that equates to about $31 million so that we're not talking about draconian, drastic budget reductions that we've seen before. In addition to that, and then while this is critical, we'll also continue to make sure we revisit how we're doing with our services or our, our goals. Council has strategic goals. We're going to continue to revisit those. We're going to make sure our programs are prioritized, our services are prioritized correctly. And we'll also make sure that we're effective in delivering those services to our, to our residents. Those things that aren't effective, that aren't efficient, will, they could be candidates for reductions. Capital plan, I'll spend just a second on this one. We want to make sure we do a better job of reporting on our capital. We haven't done a good job of that, but we owe it to this council and to the residents to do so. In addition to that, much like we have the five-year forecast for the operating side, we want to have a five-year forecast for the capital side, where we take all the department's needs and their issues and their critical areas and develop a way to evaluate how we fund those critical areas using all the sources of funding we have available to do so. And we also want to rep improve the reporting on what we're currently doing. Last slide here, I'm trying to rush quickly. Uh, so the timeline, again, we've given you the first quarter report, and again, on average, we're, we're about balanced for most funds. 
We want to come back to you in May and give you a second quarter report and says where we are, budget versus actual, how we anticipate finishing the rest of the fiscal year, and also give you an updated and hopefully a lower budget gap for FY 2012. Again, now as we stand here, it's 31 million. The recommendation will, when we come back to you in May, hopefully that number will be lower, maybe $20 million or $10 million based on some things we're able to do this fiscal year. And then we'll come back in uh, August with the city manager's proposed budget, and it'll be balanced. We would have created some savings, created some opportunities, made some reductions during this current fiscal year, so then we present the budget to you in August. It is a balanced budget. And we'll have a retreat, obviously, in August, and the budget is scheduled to be adopted in September. There are obviously a lot more meetings that will take place here. I'm just going to give you a highlight on some of the critical reporting dates, and then we'll come back in November with the fourth quarter report and tell you how we finished FY 2011 and move into FY 2013.